to my panel, uh, gentlemen. Uh, the last word I had from my man there, Aaron Chiriot says, uh, Aaron, Aaron Cheng says, you can call it for Aaron Chiriot, <laughs> quite a tongue twister there. Uh, Prof, let me start with you. What are these numbers saying? Low voter turnout. I, I know the story of the by-election, but what does it mean? Yes, well, I, I can't think of by-election, um, at least in recent memory, where the turnout has been anywhere close to what it was in a general election. Obviously, in a general election, there are so many campaign teams out at the different levels, mobilizing people. Um, but as uh, I think it was on your um, public debate um, three or four nights ago in Caricho, where one member of the audience uh, challenged, I think it was uh, your colleague Ben Kitili, and said, why should we bother to vote? In the last three years, we haven't seen uh, our leaders. They haven't delivered it on the promises that they gave us. And uh, we've seen a lot of other um, actions being taken, or at least alleged, uh, against the political class. So why should we just give these people a ticket for a party to enjoy themselves? We might as well stay home. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you've got about half of the electorate, or maybe a bit, who've come out. So that's certainly not a universal view. But uh, in between elections, however vital the outcome might be for the people who are running these parties, um, and others, for ordinary people who are struggling with their day-to-day -day lives, it takes quite a bit to, to motivate them. All right. Uh, that's not, we, we, the, what we've seen from these campaigns have been quite charged rallies, you know, both the deputy president and the kind of uh, Senator Gideon Moy reading, uh, leading these campaigns. You didn't imagine this would have been, you know, at the end of it, but, you know, it was a do-or-die situation. Is that really coming out for you? Yeah, it, it comes out very clearly because this contest, there were two positions that were very critical. One, in Malindi, Raila wanted to stamp authority that he is the next guy to face. He's the one facing Raila, so Wetangula and Ani should keep quiet. In uh, <coughs> the same position, the contest was between trying to, to say, I am the, the entry to Rift Valley politics. And the deputy president was very emphatic that nobody can overtake me in my own territory. It is me. So it was a referendum between uh, the, the Moy dynasty versus uh, uh, the Ruto dynasty. That's why it, it was not about the people of uh, Kiricho, neither was it about the people of Malindi. It was purely a national issue, a preparation towards 2017. I, I wanted to make one other point about rallies, because you mentioned the word rallies. And you know that those of us who do survey research, we never believe in rallies because that's a very unrepresentative section of the population. And I think, especially for Caricho, but also from what my friends have told me, to a certain extent at Malindi, the population or the representation of rallies is misleading for two very important reasons. Number one, we have reliable reports that many of these people who attended these rallies actually came from out the electoral area. Ferried voters. Ferry, well, not even voters, but just Curious. people who would come to occupy space at rallies. And it's important to have a big crowd and encourage those who are registered uh, in that area. But uh, that's one uh, uh, point, point we should remember. The second is, if I heard IABC Chairman Isaac Hassan correctly, he said that the voters' registers for these two by-elections remain those of 2013. Now, I would ask you, you may not be a population uh, demographer, <laughs> Mr. Smart, but in Malindi and in Caricho County, how many people have come of age who are now 18, 19, and 20 since March 2013 who may have been very visible at rallies, but they don't know what a voter's card looks like? And yet, if you look at the faces of these people in these rallies, they tend to be people from just that age group, but they are not voters. They're not voters. To this conversation, if this was a mini referendum on the Jubilee, uh, you know, coalition and whatever they've done or not done tonight, with the story we've had tonight, how would they sleep at night? You see, the thing is this: that uh, Jubilee and Cod have a similar problem. The, the elections in Kericho were about uh, competition within Jubilee. In elect elections in Malindi were about competition in 
ODM because the people who are campaigning for Charo are ODM people mm. and the people who are campaigning for <laughs> Homotengo are ODM people. Similarly, Kanu is in Jubilee and so is uh, Ruto in Jubilee. An so, uh, there wasn't any issue here. <laughs> the thing is that both parties must be worried because it appears that there are issues in their houses. Do, so they, they, care must go. About, do they care about uh, these issues? It is, look at it this way. Assuming you are doing a national elections here and uh, Tom is here who is a, a, a statistician here or a, no, a pollster. A, a pollster. Yes. Uh, if you are doing a national survey, what you are saying is that both parties would be suffering at that level. Huge percentages that their vote, uh, their block would be chipping away. So about 40, 50, 45 percent in uh, Kericho and some 30, 40 percent in, uh, in, 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 in Malindi. Malin. So who would be benefiting? The opponents. I'm interested to get the opponents, but first there's just some news coming in. Uh, and um, my colleague Murimi Mwangi joins me uh, on forward. Murimi, I understand that Kanu have rejected the Kericho results. Thanks, Matt. Yes, uh, no, the Kanu uh, party has rejected the results that are being uh, transmitted at the Tulling Center. And they say that uh, the results do not ref uh, reflect the figures that they have from uh, the tallying that they've been doing with their agents at polling stations. And they're citing, uh, in particular, a Bureti constituency, which happens to have been a perceived stronghold of the Kanu candidate, where uh, uh, they, they say now a pursuant to the results that have been uh, released by the IEBC. Uh, the Kanu candidate has uh, lost to the Jubilee counterpart, and they are citing that among many other polling stations where they say that uh, the results that they are getting at uh, the tallying center do not uh, reflect what they have from their agents on the ground. And they are now saying that uh, they want the IEBC to stop the transmission of the results until they have uh, a final tally that has been uh, done with uh, the forms that five and that six from the polling stations and the constituency tallying centers. Uh, Marimi, do we know exactly what issues are being raised for Bureti constituency? Because earlier on, the SG of Kanu Nixalat uh, did come to the press and say that they have absolutely no complaints about the voting that was going on then. So when did these issues crop up? Mm -hmm. Now, initially, uh, when, when we had that uh, press conference, their, their statement was that the voting was ongoing. Remember, in, uh, in the morning hours, there were some issues in our uh, Belgut constituency where Kanu alleged that uh, their agents had been locked out of the polling stations. But it appears that uh, like that had been resolved by the time the polling stations were closed uh, by five today. But then when the transmission of the results began, uh, allegedly from the Kanu side here, they say that the results are not exactly what they have been getting from the uh, agents in the individual polling stations. And they now insist that uh, much as there is that electronic transmission, there must be a, a, a separate uh, tally, which of course happens every time there's an election, uh, based on the hard copy results coming from the polling stations. And that, uh, they say that's the only time that uh, AEBC should declare the winner. But uh, for a beginner, the Kanu party has rejected the, uh, the results. Smart. Well, just one final thing. Uh, have they given indication if the IBC uh, supposedly refused to continue transmitting the res results, what will they do? Interest interesting things have been happening here in Kericho. Uh, much as uh, various uh, allegations of malpractice were reported even in the morning hours, when we spoke to the IBC, uh, they say that they haven't received any uh, complaint from uh, both camps that are complaining that there's a malpractice. And when we put that question to uh, the Kanu camp in the evening when we had that press conference where uh, they said that uh, some of the issues had been resolved, they told us that they would be compiling uh, all the complaints that they have to the IBC and then present them to the commission later. Uh, and it seems that they're making that statement now from the press conference that here, but their key complaint now is what they say is transmission of inaccurate uh, results from the polling stations uh, electronically. Smart. Well, Muriel Mwangi, thank you very much for that update. Gentlemen, uh, what do you make of that, Justin? This is a very serious allegation because uh, we are going to the, with the IBC in 2017. Af one year and a few months to come, they are conducting national elections. Remember, CODE has uh, the OCOA 
referendum yes. issue targeting the IBC. Now we are having, it was only code brigade saying the IBC is incompetent. We are now having a part of Jubilee agreeing that the IBC has done malpractices in handling these elections. Are we likely to see a serious onslaught on the IBC? Is this going to be the Waterloo on the IBC? If, if credibility issues are being raised within Jubilee itself, what is the standing going to be on IBC and on the deputy president? Mm -hmm. When we are going to have these people saying, if we, we feel disfranchised, then we either move out where, to what destination are they going to move out? Mm -hmm. Are they moving out to the rivals of the William Ruto's uh, 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 political brigade? It really is going it to be, be, it's going to, to cause a lot of tectonic plates. Yes. As I said, Rift Valley geographically is a land of tectonic plates. Yes. Are we going to see these tectonic plates splitting and the end result, we have a tsunami or an implosion in the Jubilee part? Prof, very quickly for being running out of time. Do this issues about voter malpractice, you know, that come from Malindi and now, you know, Kirchhoff. does it worry you? Does it say something about how prepared we are getting into 2017 elections? Yes, I mean, of course, we're waiting to hear how concrete uh, any accusations which are being compiled actually are, whether they can be substantiated. But we from the strategic plan of IABC that one of their uh, main objectives is to uh, raise their level of credibility and thus legitimacy among the public. Uh, Has this by-election done any, anything? Well, we don't know. It's still early. Let's see if any of these things materialize. But in, in one way, it would have been uh, a, a very cherished opportunity for IEBC to prove to Kenyans across all political divides that they've actually made the improvements to prepare the country for 2017. Yes. But as we've just heard on the other side of the coin, if at the end of the day they're seen, especially by uh, the observer groups and so on, let aside the partisan uh, participants, to have not been able to guarantee that le level of, of credibility, yes. this will, uh, again, raise the challenges to their continuation. You know, you know smart, last word. Uh, James, there, 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 there are simple issues here. Uh, we can see the media is pointing out there's bribes. <laughs> they're, they're, they're arrested. With the money. IBC With saying the money. nobody has reported to them. <laughs> what other credibility are you looking for? They haven't, they don't, they don't see, they have eyes, they don't, they have ears, they don't hear. They were waiting for somebody to report to them. Now, this is the surest way of them not helping themselves. All right. Martin Zolo. <laughs> Top wolf. That's the, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we should have plenty of time after we have all these results to have this panel again and just look at these issues. We're just getting warmed up. We're so. getting warmed up. We're getting, <laughs> getting into the spirit of things. Well, thank you very much for making time. KTN News continues. Don't go too far because business and sports is right up next. Stay with us.